Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Design Under Influence, where we unpack how technology can be your competitive advantage for architecture, design, and engineering firms exclusively. My name is Alex Osanenko. I'm your co-host, and I want to introduce my other co-host, Boris. Say hello. Hi, everybody. How are you doing on this beautiful day? Wonderful day. It is It is an episode about um, making an IT budget. Now, you might be sort of tempting to put a pause or navigate away because it might be boring. Promise you, we'll make it very impactful. We'll make it strategically important to you, but also a little bit entertaining. Let me start with a story. My daughter just baked some cookies. I really wanted some brownies. It was awesome. She's 11 almost. And then she's into baking. It's COVID-19. She's at home. She does some baking. So this wonderful cookies. I'm getting ready to get one. I get, pick one up. I take a bite. They look appetizing, by the way. And I almost throw up. And she mixed up salt and sugar. I'm going to call her Salty C for a little while. Anyway, so that's the, that's, that's the realities we live in today, Boris. How have you been meeting the realities of social distancing and COVID? Well, we'll be, we've been helping, uh, you know, we've been helping all of our clients work remotely and also helping them prepare for 2021 and continuing along those same lines because it doesn't seem like this thing is going away anytime soon. Um, initially, uh, you know, even many projected and you know, myself and really hoping for that by the end of the year, we'll be, you know, back to normal, whatever that is. Uh, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So we really need to figure out how 2021 is going to look like for our businesses and uh, need to plan for that. And to start, we need a budget for our business. And a big part of that is IT budget. Uh, in my opinion, that's probably your, you know, your biggest, biggest investment opportunity to make your business better uh, is to invest in your technology. Yeah, technology is your competitive advantage. That's the mantra. That should be the opportunity the business owners are investigating and looking at right now, arguably you are less busy and you are at home and your teams are at home. So it's the time to make the investment in the technology. So we're going to talk about IT budgeting and um, let's start with the, like the high level strategic definition of what does, what should the budget look like? Like what's the scope of the budget boys, you know, for a smaller company, larger company, what's the scope? How do you know how, you know, intense your budget needs to be? Well, I don't think we need to differentiate between small or big companies here. Uh, it's all about, at least to me, the feeling is budgeting is about planning, right? So as we plan for next year, as we have a strategic plan for our business, we need to identify things that we need to invest in um, on a technology side and put that into the budget. Uh, we also need to identify everything that we already have, right? Things that we're going to carry forward from this year to next year and maybe the year after that and put that into the budget so that we have a clear picture of what uh, we're going to be spending on in the next year. Now, obviously some of those things may change as you know, with 2020 and the great surprises we had this year, but at least once you complete the budget, you will have a direction you know, to help you next with your company next year. Hmm. So this brings a question to mind. How does this, does the IT budget connect to the growth budget in your experience or is it its own thing? So I know many people are trying to keep it separate. I strongly object to that notion, right? For me, anything that technology is used for, anything that, to, you know, with anything that we use technology for should be part of the technology budget, right? So whether it's marketing uh, tools and applications, they need to be a part of the IT budget so that kind of one, one side of the house is really responsible for those. Um, I think we can go to our early episode on how we kind of choose the tools um, where we give you some, some more detailed explanations of, you know, figuring out what you have and what, you, what you're using right now and then figuring out if you need to carry that forward. So again, you can work with your departments to figure out which tools you use. But once you identify those tools and you know you're going to move them forward, that needs to fall under IT. Okay. And is there a use case? Well, I imagine there's a use case for a previous year's budget. How would you go about um, building a budget most effectively, efficiently without spending all kinds of time? Is last year's budget come useful? 
in this kind of exercise? Uh, definitely, definitely. So you can look at um, everything you budgeted for. So let's say you made a budget in 2019 for 2020, um, and you're now making a budget for 2021. Uh, you can look at your 2020 budget, uh, see which which line items are in there, and see, you know, talk to your team, see if you need to continue paying for those line items or investing into those line items, uh, and carry them forward to your 2021 budget. Now. Additionally, you can look at some projects that might have been on a 2020 budget that didn't get done, uh, either because for time restrictions, other resource restrictions, or you just simply, you know, didn't have the money. It happens. Um, and you can look at, you can get, if those are still important to you, and see if you can get those done in 2021 and plan for those. Gotcha. And so the question comes in, in the form of dollar signs. How much should a firm... You know, obviously as an entrepreneur, I ran uh, a business, worked in multiple entrepreneurial organizations, and things were different in each one. But how much should people budget for IT? Is there a way to sort of peg that somehow? Well, I mean, the answer is always it depends. But we can look at some of our existing client base and just take a look. And um, I think those who are really successful and those who really value technology and understand that technology can be a competitive advantage for their firm, you know, spend four to 6% of total revenues uh, on technology and IT. So that would be a pretty good benchmark to take a look at and see how much of, you know, total income for your firm on an annual basis you're spending on technology. Yeah, I, I believe that firmly. L let me, let me translate that. Um, Here's the way I think about this. As a business owner, I used to think as a younger, you know, less astute business owner, I used to think that um, because my COO knew a thing or two about routers and technology and such, um, I was saving money. In reality, you know, I've sort of celebrated not having to spend a lot on IT because we had that resource, internal resources. But in reality, what I realize is we've missed out on a lot of opportunities to execute technology implementations that we sort of scaled back on because we we, we chose, we could, did not have resources, we did not dedicate resources. No one really knew our firm. There was you know maybe one or two IT people on call um, that sort of, we call them IT guys, right? That go fix things. There's really no continuity strategy on, on IT and sort of, I believe we missed out significantly, even though it felt at the time, they were saving tons of money. And so I think that's that's kind of crucial piece. Four to six percent. I don't know what the standard is in this industry, but you see that's across the client base for Arc IT. That seems to be the trend. That seems to be the trend for the industry in general. I think it's a little lower, but again, we're trying to move forward and improve, right? We're trying to make sure that you know we take the next step in realizing the competitive advantage technology can bring to our firms. So the four to 6% would be definitely a good good number to go after and strive for. All right, so let's round this out by talking about what should be included in the budget at the high level. And then the next episode, you and I will dig into an actual budget that you have a spreadsheet for that um, we can sort of give a little show and tell on the specifics of how to make a budget. So if you're watching this episode and you need more details, tune into the next one. But let's talk about like the specific items that need to be in the budget itself. What are the major uh, areas? As we, um, as we look at the budget and as we stress in this conversation, uh, basically anything that you're spending money and that involves technology should go into your IT budget. And we can start with we can start with just identifying um, any software that you're using right now, uh, any software that you're going to be using next year. Right, most of that is usually subscription based, um, so you want to make sure that that goes in. Uh, so carry over all the subscriptions that you're going to be using for the software next year. You have, you know, for your hardware, take a look at how old your systems are and if they're close to renewal and you know, usually we'd like to get, you know, a good, a, a firm that is on top of technology uh, renews their hardware every three to four years just because uh, with the tools that they use, heavy graphics tools, um, it's good to have, you know, top performance 
on the hardware and renew it every three to four years. So if you have systems that are older than that, you should probably consider renewing that and put that number uh, into the budget as well for next year. Or if you have systems that are not older than you know, three years, but need their warranties renewed, for example, that would be a good number to put into the budget for next year as well. So you can get warranties renewed and keep those systems covered in case there's any issues or hardware fail. So software, hardware, and then move on to any additional services you may want to use or additional services like internet connectivity, phone systems, and things like that, that you're going to be using next year still whether you're in the office or working from home. So put that in the budget as well. So those would be kind of three major categories that I can think of. Gotcha. Um, one thing I wanted to, so it's software, hardware, and any additional services. Now, let me ask you this question. It is, and this is, I struggle with this myself as a business owner. Is, say, implementing, rolling out a new innovative uh, information management tool like We've learned something about, uh, we've we've sort of looked through this company today, what's called knowledge architecture, right? Yep. Yeah, these guys are look pretty awesome. They provide a information management kind of infrastructure. So, you know, that will tighten up the efficiency and allow people sharing information and files. Now, is implementing something like this, should it go in the IT budget, growth budget, operational budget? My strong recommendation is to put it in the IT budget and then work with other departments. Um, if you have, if you're in a larger firm, then maybe those budgets are separate. But mostly in the firms that we work with and some smaller firms, the operations budget and IT budget is usually part of the same, um, same kind of bucket, right? So I would say it would go into that bucket. So operations, well, I suppose IT is under operations. That's that's right. sort of like where it's at, but. But so, so keep it under IT. So anything technology related, any rollouts, any major system rollouts, you would, you would sort of keep it tight and in, within the IT realm? Yeah, I wouldn't say, look, if you're online, rolling out a new marketing tool, even though your marketing department or your marketing people um, or person that you work with is responsible for rolling that tool out, you need, to use, you need to have it as part of your technology spending because eventually, what can happen is that person leaves, for example, or a tool changes, but the spend is still going to be there. And keeping it under IT kind of keeps it all under the same umbrella. Hmm. Gotcha. All right. Well, this was this was a uh, this was a healthy overview. Uh, those of you who are getting uh, who who are listening in uh, this time frame, we're in around November, early November, moving into the end of the year. Um, this is hopefully was timely and helpful for you. Uh, if you're listening next year, hopefully it'll help be, you know, helpful to you next year. Let us know if you have any questions. We're at getarchit.com. We're an IT company that helps engineering, architecture, and design firms make technologies their competitive advantage, make more money, you know, work happier, get more work done, grow better. Boris, thanks a lot for your time. Any parting words, words of wisdom? Thank you, Alex. And remember, technology is your competitive advantage. Well said. See you next time. See you next time.